I have always been a fan of science fiction. It's a better form of escapism than fantasy, as it's something to hypothesize about and look forward to. Maybe one day we as humans will get there. In most of these science fiction stories, Earth, if it exists, has united under a single banner. No longer are there ethno-nationalistic demographies. Instead, we are collectively labeled as humans. I do believe that world peace is an inevitability if we are to survive as a species. However, there's one thing that's hindering us in this endeavor, a concept that has plagued humanity since the Bronze Age. War. War is a central part of human society and has been for thousands of years. Wars can affect the world in a multitude of different ways. They can subject innocent bystanders to the horrors of human cruelty, damage the earth beyond recognition, topple dictators, convert populaces, keep people in check, and even in the name of freedom. Wars are glorified in modern society. Throughout human history, there have been games dedicated to war, books, movies, songs, and TV shows. Despite the horrors that are associated with it, for some reason or the other, infatuation surrounding war has been a unanimous cultural staple for centuries. With that being said, I don't think that we will see world peace in our lifetime. From 1467 to 1615, the Japanese subcontinent was in a state of constant warfare, warfare between lords vying for power. This was called Sengoku Jirai, the Warring States period. Despite this being linked specifically to Japan at a specific time, I believe that most of human history could be called the Sengoku Jirai. <coughs> it may be because I relate more to the realist school of thought within international relations, but ask yourself this. What separates a world leader or a parliament from a warlord? Sure, the modern world is full of checks and balances. The nations of the world don't have the freedoms that they once had to colonize or wage war at their own discretion. What's stopping them, though? The world is changing at a very rapid pace, and the United Nations cannot change with it. Imagine the world in a few years. What if Putin's regime is toppled by some kind of populist movement in Russia due to the catastrophic invasion of Ukraine? Can Russia survive another decade like the 1990s? What realistically would stop China from invading Siberia in situation? What is stopping them from invading Taiwan, for that matter? Or India? Chinese military activity has picked up in both their maritime border with Taiwan and disputed areas of the uh, Sino-Indian borders. Humans are a fickle bunch. The same can be said for our country as well. Seventy-seven years ago, World War II ended with the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And now Japan and the United States have one of the closest international relationships in the world, while Russia and China have been notably anti-West for the last 70 years, despite being close allies during the Second World War. If relationships can change at such a swift pace, who is to say that this era of peace is to last? Even if we as a species are to put aside our differences, how exactly will we organize together to make our world a more meaningful place? Will the nations of the world form some kind of super-state version of the United Nations? Only time will tell.